I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the Weimar Republic. This is one of the most common examples that people talk about when they discuss that hyperinflation is in Germany and back during the early 1900s. This was one of the first real world examples of what hyperinflation actually looked like. And some of these photos, I mean, just, you know, they say that basically a photo speaks a thousand words. And I think these photos tell it all. When you get towards a state where you've printed so much money, as we'll take a look at some of these statistics later on, you start to see it in the real world where this pile of cash that needed to be brought in on a wheelbarrow or needed to be stacked up in piles to just simply buy everyday goods and services showcases the depreciation of the currency. The currency, simply put, is not worth the paper that it's printed on, the, the paper and the ink that's used to print the money. It's worth more than the actual underlying currency. That's a very good visual sign of hyperinflation. We've got some other pictures here. Again, some of these are just absolutely stunning. Um, you know, seeing the cost of goods, you know, you would generally think, you know, when you buy a good or service in the U United States or, and, and, you know, the Eurozone, if you're a person with Euros, or the Canadian dollar, or the Australian dollar, major economies across the world, think about buying, you know, maybe if you're buying a chicken, right, you're going to be paying a couple bucks or a couple Euros in order to purchase it, right? A couple dollars, nothing too crazy. Well, Marx in this case, the currency in the Weimar Republic had gone up exponentially. And it's important to understand why you want to avoid hyperinflation so badly, because this event right here was one of the uh, economic milestones in Germany's history that inevitably led towards Hitler's rise in World War II. So hyperinflation not only is devastating for the savers of the general economy, but it can leave macro side effects later on that lead people towards taking on dramatic responses because there's a need to take dramatic responses towards this excessive monetary printing, right? So again, just a really interesting bit on history here. Again, another really exciting or not per se exciting, but I mean, just mind blowing photo, a full room to the brink loaded up with dollar bills, right? Absolutely incredible stuff. Now, this is a really interesting chart to showcase just how quick hyperinflation can kick in. See here back in 1918, the value of one gold mark in paper marks. So gold as an asset is time tested. It's been around for a long time. And we know that the history of gold um, is, is relatively predictable in the sense of its real fundamental value because each year, there's only about 1% to 2% uh, new introduction of supply of gold. Basically for, you know, let's say there was only a hundred ounces of gold in the world. Every year we find and uh, mint and refine about one to two new ounces, right? Relatively predictable inflation in the underlying supply of gold, right? But in the sense of the paper marks, paper is unlimited, right? We've got trees all across the world. We can make the ink to print the actual currency for the mark. And we can see here that, again, hyperinflation as the government was starting to print large amounts in order to finance the war and to be able to cover expenditures. We could see here that the actual paper marks inflated so greatly that one gold mark in the Weimar Republic, you know, in 1920 would give you 10 paper marks. Just a few years later, three years later, that experiment led it towards 1 billion marks. Apologies, my, my uh, math on that's wrong. One trillion marks per one gold mark. Again, that's at the point when you start reaching this parabolic curve, that's the later stages and the deadly phases of hyperinflation. At that point, any money you have in savings, any money you've put under your mattress or in the bank account to get yield, at that point, it's practically worthless. You might as well use it as toilet paper, to put it frank, right? So this is a very serious matter, guys, to talk about. And I don't want to scare you guys overall hyperinflation. We'll talk about some real world economies here that are going through it, but also keep the open reality that this could be very well the case for the United States and many other countries across the world. No one is impervious to hyperinflation. So 